Khan, Kelly Clarkson, or even Adele, just to name a few of the very huge artists that this amazing person that I'll be talking with today has been working with. He's also a member of the International Dance Council, and the Vietnamese people know him a lot through his years working with So You Think You Can Dance Vietnam as a coordinator. And today is my great honor to be sitting here in person with Honey Abaza. Hi. How are you doing? I'm amazing. I feel great. Mm -hmm. Since when have you found that you have this great passion for dancing? Oh my God, that's a funny story, actually. I started really late. I started when I was 17 years old, actually. Oh. It's my best friend that danced, and I used to love going to watch her at her studio. I'd grab my bicycle, I'd go up to the studio, and I'd just watch her take class. I ended up being the studio mascot, oh. and I would go to all the competitions, and kind of, I kind of had no life. I would even borrow her videotapes and watch them at home, and I wouldn't try to do them or anything. I just, for some reason, I had, was drawn to this performance art, you know? And one day she was performing on stage and she didn't do very well. She was like, well, if you think it's so easy, why don't you do it? And I was like, I will. And I started dancing. And at that point, I, I think I, I found what love was, you know? Yeah. Well, wow, that's really spontaneous. Yeah, it is a little bit. <laughs> What do you think are the characteristics that are necessary for a wonderful best choreographer? Somebody who understands that choreography is not just making steps up. Someone who can create an ambiance and a world and something that you can watch to take any person out of their own world for a moment and escape reality. Um, and someone who can choreograph something beautiful or amazing or emotional or awesome or cool on anybody. Before coming up with any of your choreographer work, what is the first thing that you have to take into consideration? If I could marry them or not. Huh? Yeah. Before you get married, you have to date somebody and you yeah. have to get to know them and you have to know if you're... Before I even consider anything, and is this going to work really? Wow. You know wow. what I mean? Great. Yeah, I think that's my first mm -hmm. step before anything. What took you to Vietnam? Three words. John, we, Chan. He's been my best friend for a long time now. Yeah. I know him from Canada before yeah. he even came to Vietnam. He's really a big reason why I'm here. He opened that door and, and said, hey, my friend is already part of the brand in Canada. He was yeah. a contestant. I was a contestant in Canada, yeah. uh -huh. believe it or not. And uh -huh. I also worked on the American show, so uh -huh. I knew the brand pretty well. So uh -huh. it was easy for him to introduce me to them, but yeah. it was a lot easier for me to come because he's pioneering so many things in dance here. And why not be a part of that? And uh -huh help because he needs help and everybody needs help and yeah. I need help. So what do you think about the dancing community in Vietnam in general? I think it's amazing and I think it's young with an old soul and that's how I would rate it. Yeah, young with an old soul. What do you think it's going to head up next? I think that more importance in a union maybe and um, creating, creating more opportunity for dancers um, to be paid a little bit more and to be respected artists a little bit more in that sort of way so that it becomes something conventional and it becomes a respected career as well, you know? I would love it to go in that direction. I would love people to have agents and be taken care of and not have to worry about contracts and it just to become more of a business as well because there's a lot in there. And what are your plans for 2016? This year, I'm only planning to go back to Canada for a couple of months and then I'm gonna come right back here. Yeah, more Vietnam and more growth in me, in love, in life and everything. I know that you have been able to work with many huge stars and artists. So is there any moment that you think that you could never forget? There's actually two moments I could uh -huh. never forget. Uh -huh. One of them is uh, with a, an artist from the UK. Her name is Florence and the Machine. She's so wonderful. That was a moment in my career where I was so nervous to perform because it was live. And the front row was like Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, Janet Jackson, and I did it. And it was amazing and it was the best feeling. And it was also one the first time they had a big contemporary performance on the VMAs ever. So it was a big moment for contemporary dance. I think that's what added to the pressure. So my second one wasn't even with a well-known artist that I'm sure any of you know, but it was um, it was an amazing project because it was this man named Renato Russo who is like the John Lennon of Brazil. Conveniently, he looks like my uncle. 
Huh? So I was hired to, and my dance ability came this much in it. I was hired to learn to a 20 minute set of his music in Portuguese. They put prosthetics on my face, made me look exactly like him, and filmed me. And um, I mean, I hope he rests in peace because he's not with us anymore. But basically they filmed me and made a hologram of me. And the hologram opened the Managaniche, which was the stadium in Brazil that held the World Cup that year. Thank you for sharing with us. And uh, it was great to have you here on Spicy Vietnam. Yeah. Mwah. Mwah. I'm Hany Abaza and you're watching Spicy Vietnam.